your children. We thank you that um, that things change because we're in you, because you love us. And I pray that this morning our hearts will be open wide so that we can take in how much you love us. Not that we can understand that full, the fullest extent, but help us to grow and to just to know more how much you care for us and how close you are to us, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hey, everybody. Good morning. How are you going? You're looking well. Uh, my name's Steve, if you don't know me. Um, welcome to Salt. Especially if you're new or visiting, uh, it's very good to have you. Um, there's a few there's a few announcements. Uh, who can tell me what's on Saturday this week? What's happening on Saturday? Oh uh, yeah, we we have a, a family fair, a family fun day at the th- at the farm. It's a tongue twister at Sassafras, and um, it'll be a great day. It's it's a it's a uh, a family day for the, the fire-affected families in that area. But, of course, you guys are invited to, and it should be great. There's entertainment. There'll be food available, um, and there'll be uh, games games for the kids. Yeah, live music. Uh, Pete will be there. So um, <laughs> it'll be great. <laughs> it'll be really good. Um, just a reminder as well, uh, on a serious note, don't forget to pray for people that uh, have, have health issues or medical issues at the moment. Because uh, does prayer make a difference? Yes. Does healing happen? Yes. Yeah, good work. So uh, especially remember uh, Peter Stikey and uh, Judy uh, Wait uh, and um, Talita as well. I'm Donna. <laughs> no, and she's even here. You're a champion. So, uh, yeah, please do remember those guys uh, during the week. That'd be awesome. Uh, unless there's any more announcements, let's do the dedication, yeah? If, um, thanks, Stuart. Okay, I think this is number three, this one. It's good to declare what we believe, so stand up. Too often you take it, I take in all the messages around me and I don't declare enough what I believe. So are we ready? Okay, here we go. We declare today that we are a new creation in Christ Jesus, that he has delivered us from the power of darkness. Greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. The spirit of God dwells within us. We decide today to walk by faith and not by sight and no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Our God richly supplies all our needs according to his riches and glory. We live under God's supernatural protection, and God has great plans for us, and we are filled with hope for a great future. Today, as I join my values with yours, you will shower favour, blessings, and increase upon me, So I have more than enough to co-labor with heaven and see Jesus get his full reward. Amen. Amen. Okay, Pete, would you like to come up? Oh, and let's take up the offering now. If uh, if someone has those those, uh, baskets, that's great. Thanks, Pete. Thanks, Steve. And kids can go. Down the red carpet. I haven't seen the red carpet before. That's awesome. Thank you, Jesus. Well, it's good to be in church on a Sunday, isn't it? I just uh, just give some information. There's been a lot of things that have happened this week. And just 
and we've shared with the, the church because we've shared with every one of you about what's going on over it's, what's been happening over the last few months but there's been we've ha, we've been if you don't know salt salt actually employs 32 people and that costs basically twenty thousand dollars a week to run and it's cost so it costs a lot of money to do that and over the last few months finances grants and things haven't been coming in and so it's put a lot of pressure on us and so we've got an amazing staff and so at one stage we went to all our staff and we said hey guys you know things are a bit tight so there's a couple of options before you you can either have a month off without pay two months without with half pay or find another job and every one of them came and said, hey, we want to stay. So it's amazing the staff that we have because it's not just employees we have, they're family. And so things have been really tight. Um, God's been faithful, but it's been hard. And we had to make a decision during the week. We had to make a decision that we will close our homeless shelter tonight unless... More, more funding comes in. And so there was 40 of us at 9 o'clock up at the shelter with Win News talking to them about what happens when the shelter closes. So I just, we're letting you know that we're, we are 100% committed to keeping that shelter open, but it will close tomorrow morning until more funding is found. And so I just want, I want you to know that as a family. I want you to be praying for that because if, if you don't know, we started the homeless shelter five years ago and it was started out of a response of a homeless crisis we were having in the Shoalhaven where over 40 people were camped up at the showground and the community was up in arms and they said, what's going to be done about this? And the council gathered community members and asked us if we would start this shelter. And over the last five years, we've given 16,000 beds. That's amazing. To over 850 different clients. Men, women, families, children. There is no other place. And the beautiful thing, what the shelter was doing and what it does do, is it brings people in like a funnel and then we're able to evaluate them and move them into other housing. It is this net that catches the most vulnerable people in our community. And so I, we're letting you know this, not because... Well, you might be sitting here with a million dollars and you want to give us. That's okay. I will take that. But I'm letting you know because we're in this together. And, I, and obviously I went on the camera and I went on the TV and said, this is not over. This will open. We are 100% sure of that. But we're just, it's, it's been paid for. It costs $250,000 a year to run the shelter. And it's been paid by this community for five years. I reckon that is amazing. And now it's about time the state government start partnering with us and help funding it. And so, so we, um, that, w that will be on the news in the next couple of nights, win news. And um, if you want to watch that, that'd be great. Share it on Facebook, write to your local member. We've already written to them all, but that's, keep it going. We will get this open. We've got, they say we've got three weeks before the, the state government goes into caretaker mode before the, before the March election. So we've got three weeks to make a lot of noise and get this funded. So please be with us in prayers. Okay. Oh, yes, you can. I just want to um, say a big thank you to everyone that's worked... Uh, volunteered at the shelter but not only that all of the staff and the volunteers here at SALT because I mean a lot of the staff have now chosen to continue their work without pay which you know and everybody's working out other ways to make money at the moment uh, because of the financial situation so I just think your 
amazing. <laughs> You're all amazing. And um, just to be in a culture and a family that, I mean, obviously not everybody can live like that, but to be in a culture and a family where people want to stay, you know, they want to stay if they can, and they want to continue serving, because not, you know, everybody needs money to pay the bills, but for all of us, and I think it's how Salt started, it was never about that. It's about a call of God on our lives. And that call of God stands in season and out of season. It stands when it rains and it stands when the sun shines. You know, and we will continue to love the poor and the vulnerable and those in our community, even if it changes shape slightly. You know, that's, that's the call of God on us as believers. And, and that's who we've called to be. So I just want to thank all of you because I think you're amazing and I don't want to do life without any of you and like even I mean Jo passed her job over several weeks ago and it started a wonderful new job but she's here today too because this is close to her heart you know all the people that have sown their lives into this shelter and into salt it's all of you and we just say thank you and Said, welcome back welcome back say it's been away for a while but welcome back so lovely to have you back so, sorry, I'll stop talking. That's okay. And, and understand, this is just a season. This is not the beginning. This is not the end. This is just a part of the journey. And it's, I'm, I'm actually really excited about what God's just about to do. Because I can see it. I can feel it. It's, there's, there's some amazing things we're about to do. But this morning, I wanted to speak to you. And I've been, I've been thinking about this for a long time. But I wanted to speak to you about swimming against the tide. I want to speak to you about swimming against popular opinion and walking against popular opinion because I'm not sure about you but when when I read the stories of Jesus and when I read the stories of the Bible he was a man that didn't follow the crowd he followed his own conviction he followed what Jesus what God what the Holy Spirit what the three of them were talking about he followed and I want to ask start by asking you this question have you ever thought about what society or what the world thinks of you have you ever thought about what the world thinks of you John Sornick when they look at you what do they see have you ever thought about what the world thinks of you I'm not sure about you but were you a popular person at school were you in the in crowd? Were you bullied at school? Were you a bully at school? Who, who would the world say you are? How does the world view you? I remember in 1977, August of 1977, I was nine years of age when I was introduced to Jesus and I was in St. Mark's Sylvania, an Anglican church and this man, George Guest, my Sunday school teacher, at the end of Sunday school, I met with him and he prayed for me to receive Jesus into my heart. And I can remember it so vividly because not only did he pray for me, he had this prophetic word for me and he told me all, all these things that God is just about to do in my life. He taught me that the road to salvation was narrow and the way to destruction was wide. He taught me that Jesus wasn't the popular opinion or it wasn't the norm, but Jesus would be the most fulfilling choice and life that, that I would ever choose. And at that point, I said to Jesus, choose me. I, I want to know you. I want to know you. And I met this Jesus who came to save the world, not with an army, not with a fanfare. He came to save the world with love. 
And this love entered my heart. It entered in in such a way that I realised that Scripture in Luke 19.10 For the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. And I was found. I was found, I was loved, and I was loved that much that I couldn't do it without him. And I started to carry this radical message. I started to carry this message that he speaks over every one of us. And that is that he gave up everything for the chance of knowing you. He gave up everything for a chance at sitting beside you and knowing you, seeing you face to face, sitting with you and going, Dave, you're mine. Dirk, you're mine. He he gave up everything, all the fanfare of heaven to come down and meet with us. So powerful, so raw and so exciting. And Jesus' words in John 15, 18 to 19 said this, says this, Just remember, when the unbelieving world hates you, they first hated me. If you were to give your allegiance to the world, they would love you and welcome you as one of their own. But because you won't align yourself with the values of this world, they will hate you. I have chosen you and taken you out of the world to be mine. And I understood as a young man that heaven was my home. So I want to ask you these questions. So why is it? So why is it that the church, so why is it that Christians are still wanting the approval of the world? Why do we fight for it? Why do we stand for it? Why do we say, I, I've got your love, God, but I need the world to love me. I need the world to approve of who I am. I need this to feel fulfilled. Why is it? I mean, isn't the church and aren't our lives supposed to change the world? And yet, we've allowed the church to be changed by the world. And you know, in some circumstances, it's very hard to see the difference between the church and the world. Instead of swimming against the tide, we've learnt to swim with it. And this morning, I just want to spend a few minutes, but I want to spend a few minutes on three keys that will help us swim against the tide and will help us live like Jesus. Three keys. It's simple. It's simple and it comes out of Romans chapter 12 if you've got a Bible with you, just starting at verse 1. And verse 1 says this. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. The first key to swimming against the tide, the first key to living like Jesus is sacrifice. And I just want to read it in the Passion Translation. It says this, Beloved friends, What should be our proper response to God's marvellous mercies? To surrender yourself to God, to be his sacred living sacrifice and live in holiness, experiencing all the delights of his heart, for this becomes your genuine expression of worship. It all starts with sacrifice. Now, I'm not sure about you, but when you wake up in the morning, You wake up and go, hey, today I'm going to sacrifice something new. I'm going to give away something else. I'm going to let go of this thing that's been holding on me. No one likes to sacrifice. No one likes to take off 
what's been hanging around and lay it down. But here, here in, here in Romans 12, 1, Paul's saying, hey guys, if we don't lay our lives down, if we don't lay our lives, our complete life down to Jesus, we can't truly live in him. And and you know what? Whatever you lay down, God will come into. So if you if you lay down your business, if you say, I'm going to sacrifice my business for you, God, he will come into that space. But if you don't, he won't. He won't push his way into your life. And that's why the, the sacrifice is a daily thing. It's not, it's not just, okay, God, I've given my life to you. What else do you want? It's not that at all. It's, I give my life to you because, Lord, I've just found another area of my life that isn't connected to you. So I want to give this to you this morning. I've just found this thought pattern that's going on in my life. I want to give that to you this morning, Lord. I want to sacrifice, to that. I want to sacrifice this part of my life and give it to you because that is my spiritual act of worship. It's not just jumping around and singing a song or or dancing on the street. It's actually me giving my life to you because it's no longer I that live, but it's you that live in me. And I take myself off the throne and I put you back on it and I live for you. That, my friend is not a popular message. That is the message of surrender to Jesus. If you want Jesus working in your life, give him your life and he will work. You, want, you wonder why God isn't showing up. It's maybe because you haven't given him access to your life. Give him your life. He will show up 100%. 100%. I guarantee it. You give him your life. He will show up. And he will show you a new way. Any time there's a roadblock. Like right now. I, I just shared just before I started speaking. About what's going on in our community. This is God saying. Hey. I, I need to get your attention. I want to show you what I'm doing. Hey, guys, I'm doing a new thing. The rain is here. The rain comes just before harvest. I'm doing a new thing. I don't want you to just do it the old way. I want you to hear my voice. And we're in this flux at the moment. We're in this place where he's saying, just hear me. Hear me, just pause for long enough to hear my voice. Number one, it starts with sacrifice. What are you prepared to give him? I remember crying as a nine-year-old going, I can't believe this guy, Jesus, loves me. It was real. What are you prepared to give him? What are you prepared to sacrifice? What are you prepared to lay at his feet? Key number two, it's found in Romans 12 verse 2 and it says this. And I believe key number two is so important. It says this, do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Key number two is don't conform, be transformed. In the Passion Translation, it says this, stop imitating the ideas and the opinions of the culture around you, but be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how you think. Stop imitating the ideas and the opinions of the culture around you. How do we do that? We are immersed in this culture around us. Whatever is popular, we want to be a part of. We dress the way the culture does. It tells us to dress. We drive the cars that the culture tells us to drive. We do everything what the culture tells us to do. How do we stop imitating the culture of the world? 
The only way we can stop imitating the culture of the world is have our mind transformed. Be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how we think. As kids, we're taught how to think and why we think. We need to be transformed. We need to have the transformed mind of Christ. See, Jesus wasn't oppositional. He was positional. He didn't choose the position of the world, but he chose to position himself to hear the Father. I only do what I see my Father do. I only hear what I hear my Father say. He only did what he saw his Father do. You know, sometimes I think the church only does what they see the world do. Sometimes we as Christians do what is just done because we do it that way. But he hasn't chosen us to be like that. He's chosen us to be positional with him. So we hear from the Father and we do. And that's why salt has been so amazingly refreshing in one sense is because we just love everybody. There are some people here today who are homeless. There are some people here today that, that are doctors. There are some people here today that are all different walks of life because Jesus just accepts everyone without judgment. But the world judges, my friends. But we are not a part of the world. You are his. You are his. You are his. So how do I swim against the tide? I, I lay my life down and give it to him. I don't conform to the ways of the world. No, it's not going to work. But I'm allowing you, Holy Spirit, to transform my mind so I can hear you. We have allowed the world around us to be the loudest voice in our head. And God is saying, do not conform any longer to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Let me transform you, he's saying. Let me transform you into my image. Give your life to me. Stop conforming and be transformed. Wow, I bet you th we're glad you came to church today. There's something that may There's something... That takes place with those two keys. When we give our life to Jesus, when we hand over everything to Him, when we stop conforming to a pattern of the world and start being transformed by Him, there's an amazing thing that happens. Romans 12, 2, the end of 2, says this. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing and perfect will. Key three is this. A transformed mind sees the will of God. See, without a transformed mind, you cannot see the will of God. Have you ever said to someone, I just really want to know the will of God for my life. I've, I've been running aimlessly for so long. I just want to know what he wants from me. If you just tell me what you want from me, I'll give it. He's just saying, hey, guys, I want your life. Sorry, it's, just, it's not just, look, you want to just give your hand? No, I don't want your hand. I want your life. I want you to swap sides. I want you to say, you, you leave this camp and you come to my camp. You can't live in two camps. It doesn't work. He wants your life so he can cause his Holy Spirit to run through you so you can live, so you can be exactly what he had in mind when he created you. He wants our life. 
He wants us to stop following popular opinion and he wants us to follow that still small voice and follow that go through the narrow gate and see him because he knows and you wouldn't believe this he knows a better way he knows a lot better way you know the world says the more you have the better you are Jesus says you are enough you are enough You are enough. The world tramples and forgets about the vulnerable. And Jesus came to give them life. Unless we understand sacrifice, unless we understand that we cannot conform any longer but be transformed, we will never see The will of God. A transformed mind sees the will of God. A transformed mind sees the things of God. I could probably, and I'm not going to do it, I could probably point out 10 people here this morning that have come to me over the years and said, God never speaks to me. And I remember... A vivid one of those 10 people. And I remember praying for that person many, many times. And I remember the day that person came to me and said, Pete, I've got it. I said, you've got what? God's speaking to me. And I remember saying, so what changed? And they said, I gave my life to him but didn't you pray that prayer many times you know the sinner's prayer I give my life to you Jesus forgive me of my sins and now I'm saved yeah but she said the words but now it was done the sacrifice was made she removed herself from the camp of the world she said I'm no longer going to conform And transformation happened and she could hear God. If you say to me, you don't hear God, I'm saying it's because there's other, there's other voices in your head. There's other noise. There's other powers. There's other positions that are speaking to you. You remove those and you hear the voice of God. So this morning, I want to leave you with this. He hasn't called us to be mainstream. We were never meant to be mainstream. We were always meant to be grassroots, changing the world one person at a time. If you want to be on the stage with thousands, that's fine. But he's called us to be, he's called us to be grassroots. He's called us to start. It starts with me. So Father... This is, this is your living sacrifice. Do whatever you want. I'm not going to listen to the voices of the world or the, the opinion of man. I'm going to be transformed by the renewing of my mind by your Holy Spirit so I can start to see you, so I can see your plans, so I can see your purposes because I don't want to live in the same cycle as the world around me. I choose you, Jesus, as you choose me. So I want you to just close your eyes. Can you do that? I'm not going to hit you. I want you to close your eyes and just, just pray with me. So Jesus, we, we just want to walk with you. We want to live like you. We don't want to be mistaken for another identity. We want to be seen as you, Jesus. So Father, we just, we hand over our life to you this morning. 
again. And Lord, if there's any area within our life that we haven't handed over to you, Father, we just find it, show it to us, and we sacrifice, we we offer our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing unto you. This is our spiritual act of worship. We worship you, and it's because of your great mercies, it's because of what you've already done for us, that we trust you and we hand over to you. And we say, Father, take our lives as a holy sacrifice. We will no longer conform to the patterns of the world or the pressures of the world or the opinions of the world, but we will be transformed by your Holy Spirit and understand who you are because in that transformation, we can see your will. A transformed mind sees the will of God. And Father, we thank you and we praise you for that transformed mind. And we see your will. And we follow your will. And even though we still make mistakes, Lord, we come back to that place. We sacrifice again and we, and we, and we transform again so we can see your will. So I just pray, Lord, right now that you allow your Holy Spirit to minister to every person in this community. Thank you, Jesus. And we thank you for what is happening right now. Even though it's difficult, we understand change is afoot. And we rest in you. We are anxious for nothing. But we pray that your presence changes our life. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. So I want to thank you for being awesome sacrifices and allowing his presence to come alive in you putting off those pressures of the world and being transformed in your mind so you can see the will of God I just have a prophetic word I want to share with you um, from someone called Nate Johnston And he put this out the other day, and I believe it's for us. To those who are building legacy right now over building empires. See, the world will tell you to build your empire. The The world will tell you to build your kingdom. But Jesus is asking us to build a legacy. He's saying few will recognize or see what you are building because it's an underground mission. It's a call to build low and slow while the rest of the ministry world is building fast and publicly. It's a calling that takes place behind the stage and often doesn't look glamorous. It's the call to build the family over the organisation. It's moving away from the hustle and building what is organic and homegrown. It's the call to establish deep roots that extend beyond your lifetime and build a future for the generations to come. It's a call to address generational strongholds, cycles and injustices and break bloodlines and establish healthy ones. It's the call to set new foundations and prioritise health and wholeness over public image and reputation. It's the call to reverse the messes of the institution that built empires at the cost of leaving orphans in its wake. It's the call to forfeit the plans and goals that produce immediate results for the building and pioneering of what takes many years to show above the surface. And many are in the tension of this call Because they no longer feel the pull of the conference circuit or the appetite for the lifestyle they once valued. It feels in many ways like you are going in reverse or have lost your favour. But this couldn't be further from the truth. 
The Father has thrown his mantle around your shoulders and you have begun to burn the old plough and begin the new path. If this is you, then you need to know that you are not lazy, rebellious, in error or strange for feeling this call. This is the call of mothers and fathers to establish the family, to set the table and to call in the lonely and the lost. This is the call to raise up your family well, to pioneer even healthier marriages, discover God's design in covenant relationships and a house of Acts community, as well as raise up a generation that knows how to represent the kingdom well. In a time where the anti-family culture of the world has begun to invade the church, God has called many to the front lines to rebuild and reset the definitions and design of God's house so we can have, be a force to be reckoned with. So keep going, keep building, keep forging forward on the unpopular path. I just think that's for us and meant a lot to me. So can I, did you want to come back up? Well, just <laughs> Father, we just thank you that You've called us to an unpopular path. But Lord, you've called us to build and to plough and to forge something that will see generations come to know you. We'll see generations come out of the shadows into your glorious love that will see the lost and the vulnerable and the lonely put in families, that will see the, the, the small and the broken of this world brought into wholeness and brought into life. And so, Lord, would you right now, would you fill us afresh? Father, would you just break off us? And I know I speak for myself, Lord. Would you break off me and my all my church family here, would you break off us the things of this world that cling to us, Lord, and would you help us to fix our eyes on you, the author and the perfecter of our faith, so that we can walk the narrow road and we can do it with absolute 100% love, love for you, love for others, with no desire to be known by anyone but you. So, Lord, would you come right now? Would you minister to our hearts? We acknowledge that sometimes the road is rocky and sometimes it's steep and sometimes it's hard to traverse, but we know you are on it with us and we wouldn't want it any other way. We wouldn't want to be walking any other path but the one you lay before us. So we thank you, Lord. We thank you for each and every one of us here. And, Lord, we hold on to one another uh, as we move forward together in the things you've called us to. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Maybe we could put on a song and enjoy a cuppa. If you need prayer, grab someone, uh, grab a friend to pray for you or you're welcome to come forward and we will pray for you here as the music plays too.